Hello gamers and welcome back to Solo Spelunking. This time back to another episode of my Star Wars campaign. Star Wars powered by Knave, A Smuggler's Tale. And we continue our adventure with our smuggler Galen Ryder who um, in the last session made contact with a female Godel corporate executive who um, knew his parents and she um, offered to uh, hook him up with some members of the Rebel Alliance um, so that Galen can, can get in contact with them to yeah, complete his personal quest of finding out if his parents are still alive and if so where they are imprisoned um, because they have been arrested by the Empire and their logistics company has been seized uh, by under um, fabricated or because of fabricated um, allegations or um, um, yeah uh, allegations of high treason they were um, accused of aiding and supporting the rebel alliance which of course was not true it was uh, a means by the empire to uh, seize their assets acquire their logistics company to use in their military machine um, <clears throat> so since then Galen took on a fake identity and is now hiding in the outer rim and trying to yeah to find out what happened exactly to his parents and um the gotel said um she needed some time um to make contact with the alliance to make some inquiries and during that time um galen was asked to yeah, go about his business to not raise any suspicion and he finally managed to take on a smuggling contract or to get a smuggling contract um, to smuggle a load of um, chemical agents a highly uh, regulated highly restricted uh, toxic nerve agent to the Nembu system in the outer rim and the thing is that the route the the hyperspace route he um needed to take show it to you right here on my point crawl map the hyperspace route um took him through an area here so he had to go from six to seven took him through an area with increased pirate activity so um i made a check and of course he does encounter some pirates that um once again are blocking the hyperspace route by by moving large objects like um, rocks or derelict vessels um, in the coordinates of the hyperspace route to force um, a hyperspace safety cutoff to then attack vessels in real space so this is what has happened now on the way to the Nimbu system in the outer rim and we are about to start this session by resolving this space combat. All right, so Galen is flying through hyperspace and suddenly an alert goes off. His uh, hyperdrive safety cuts in, reverts him back into real space. In front of him, um, a debris field that um, yeah, he barely manages to evade. And out of the debris field from the side, a pirate transport is approaching on an intercept course. And um, I got the pirate vessel stats right here. It will have four D8 of hull strength and one D8 of shield strength. I will determine this uh, in a moment. A defense of 12 and a plus 2 bonus to piloting and attack rolls and it deals d6 points of damage. So before we start the combat, 
let's find out how tough this vessel actually is by rolling 48 for its hull strength. Alright, so that's 15, not too bad. 10, 15 hull. 15 hull. And shield strength is only 1d8. I'm using this one because it just rolled a 1. This is a <laughs> yeah, 5. Okay, so and 5 points of shield strength. Shields are reduced before the hull is reduced. All right, so the vessel approaches. Um, but uh, this time Galen Ryder, he already knows this kind of drill because it happened to him uh, once before. So now um, we do roll initiative for the first round of combat. I rule that he is not ambushed by this. Um, so we do roll initiative. And green will be friendly, Galen, and red will be the enemy. But still, even though Galen is not surprised by this maneuver, um, the pirate transport um, still got the drop on him. YT-1300. Kill your engines, hold your position and prepare to be boarded. Not in this lifetime, pirate scum. <sighs> So, uh, once again, uh, I have to determine how many rounds um, Galen needs to survive until he can re-engage his hyperdrive. Because after an emergency shut-off, there's a safety cooldown and it'll be 2d6 rounds. Six rounds. Alright, so he's got a... I tracked this with 1d6, so he has to survive six rounds of combat. So this will be the first of these six rounds. And yeah, so he, of course, he does not stop. Um, he tries some evasive maneuvers and the pirate vessel tries as his move to establish a pursuit position behind Galen, so he needs to make a pilot check and beat Galen's pirating defense, which is not that high, it is um, 11, so he needs a 12 to establish position. Four, he fails to establish a pursuit position, so he does manage to um, yeah to get behind Galen, but he does not get any any bonuses, uh, so he just makes a normal attack. And again, he attacks with plus two and needs to get a twelve to beat Galen's defense of eleven. And he misses only a three. So he tries to, to find a position behind Galen, who is uh, yeah, flying around wildly, making evasive maneuvers. And yellow laser bolts um, shoot past Galen. And um, yeah, Galen manages to, to evade. Now Galen tries to um, establish a pursuit position behind the enemy and where's my lucky d20 yeah i'm using the blue one and i've got a piloting bonus of plus one and i also need to beat the defense of 12 so i need a 13. And this is my move damn i don't uh, manage to establish a pursuit position but I do manage to um, yeah circle around get behind the transport or at least get him somehow in my front firing arc but um, 
I'm in no pursuit position, so I do not get any advantage. So now I will attack again, or will attack, just uh, make a normal attack and try to score a hit. Ah, oh, damn, three. But also, doo -doo, doo -doo, doo -doo, my double laser cannon misses as the pirate transport um, flies by in front of me. All right, so one round down, five rounds left. So second round and we do roll initiative. Four, ha <laughs> ha, yes, four to two. So now this time I have the initiative, so I manage somehow to keep him in my front firing arc. And as my move, I still try to establish a pursuit position. But I don't, only a five. So, uh, but uh, I still have a good firing position but I do not get any advantage. Try to score a hit with my double laser cannon, which is mounted on a turret, but since I don't have a gunner, I locked it into the forward firing position and shoot from or control it from the cockpit. And I hit because I rolled a 12 plus one is 13. That is exactly what I needed and I score maximum damage of six. So this takes out all five points of shield and one point of hull. So he's at 14 hull, but the important thing is that the pirate transport does not have any shields. So I managed to, to line up a great shot and the full salvo strikes his shields they try to absorb all the energy, but it's too much. They collapse and another salvo actually strikes the hull and causing a minor explosion and scorch mark on the, on the hull. And now it's the pirate's um, turn. He tries to get out of this... Um, Bad position and tries to circle around to establish establish a pursuit position. Eleven plus two, he manages to do it. Thirteen. So now he managed to establish a pursuit position. So this is uh, for those of you watching this for the first time. This is what this square here means uh, this is the pursuit position which means he is um, tailing me and now he can attack with advantage so with 2d20 and he can take the higher value <clears throat> of course he hits 16 but only for three points of damage however i do not have any shields yet so it is uh, reduced directly from my hull points. So I am down to 19 points of hull from 22. <laughs> so my, my ship is hit as well. <laughs> another scorch mark, another carbon scoring. And that was this round of combat. So turn this to four and we roll initiative. And I really have to shake this guy because I'm in a bad position. But this is my chance, five to three. So I try to get out of this uh, bad position as my move and again um, try to establish pursuit myself. So this will be my move. And yes, 18. So now I managed to establish pursuit and get to attack with advantage. So this will be my attack. With advantage, yes. Thanks to the advantage, I hit 
for three points of damage, taking the pirate vessel down to 11 hull. All right, so I managed to adapt to his uh, maneuvers and his flying, established pursuit, and my dual laser cannon adds another carbon scoring mark to his hull. But now it's his turn, and he tries again to get out of the spot and establish pursuit. But he fails only a seven, so he does not manage to get out of this uh, pursuit position. And so um, I stay behind him. Um, but uh, since he's got a larger crew, he does have gunners, so he can just. Um, I rule that he also has turret mounted weapons, so he can just fire at me, anyways. But. Uh, he does not get advantage and I keep my advantageous position. So that will be his attack. Fifteen. He hits, but it's only a grazing hit. One point of damage, so I am at eighteen hull. Carbon scoring again. So that was another round of combat. So I will turn this to three and initiative. But I still have the advantageous position here. Now at this time he has the initiative. Um, so it's uh, his turn. He once again tries to establish position himself get out of this tight spot. <laughs> Epic fail! <laughs> I got you, you son of a bitch. <laughs> so I stay behind him. He tries to wiggle, but uh, I wiggle with him and I don't let him out of my sight. I stick to him like glue. And he's desperate, so he fires backwards with his turrets. <laughs> but without any advantage. And he misses. Seven plus two, that's only nine. So <laughs> now I get to attack and I get to attack with advantage because I've still established my pursuit or kept my pursuit position. <laughs> even though I have advantage, I miss, I rolled an 8 plus 1, only 9, and even if I would have hit, it's only 1 point of damage. Alright, so, um, yeah, that was not too good, actually it was pretty bad, so I miss, <laughs> the shots go wildly, and turn this down to 2, and roll initiative for the next round. Three to two for me. <laughs> so I get to shoot. And lucky for me, I'm still in the established pursuit position. Because he did not succeed in breaking my pursuit. And no, yeah, no, I don't hit. 11 plus 1 is 12, but in Nave you've got to beat the defense, and the defense is 12, so I would have needed a 13, so sadly I hit. Um, should I ever manage to, to get a level, I mean I'm already at 500 XP, you can raise three stats. I will definitely raise my um, Wisdom modifier, I will raise my Dexterity modifier, and also, I think, my Charisma modifier. So that would... Uh, but this is uh, in, the, in the future. First, I need to focus on, on surviving this. So um, I didn't deal any damage to him. So now it's his turn for his move. He once again tries 
to establish position himself. And he manages it. 10 plus 2 is 12, and I have a piloting defense of 11. So, um, yeah, because, uh, because of my bad shot, um, I gave him an opening, um, I miscalculated, and now he managed to establish position and can attack with advantage himself. but only for two points of damage. So I'm at 16 hull. All right, so uh, that's it for this round. Move this to one. Roll initiative. <clears throat> So after this round, I can re-engage my hyperdrive. Initiative. And I got the initiative, so now I can um, try to establish pursuit and break his pursuit. And I managed to do it. 13 plus 1 is 14 against his pilot defense of 12. So oof, I have position once again which means I can attack with advantage. Haha, <laughs> and I hit for four points of damage. And this takes him down to seven hull. All right. So it's his turn now. He tries to establish pursuit before he attacks as his move. Oh, oh boy, boy, wait, sorry. Um, I gotta reroll this because he does not have advantage to try to establish position. Sorry. Yeah, but he manages to establish position and now he gets to attack with advantage. Uh. Ah, damn, he hits for four points of damage, so now I'm down to 12 points of hull. And that's it. I could engage my hyperdrive. I could. The thing is, now, I know he's in pretty bad shape. I mean, I know as a player he's at 7 hull, but even Galen Ryder, I've seen that I scored a couple of hits, that he um, does not have any more shields, that his hull suffered some serious damage. So I'm thinking maybe... I try to, to, to turn it around and try to land another hit to cripple him, to disable him, and then have him jettison cargo for me to scoop up and threaten to destroy him. Ah, that's pretty daring, but maybe that'll teach him. Ah, I'm... I'm I really I don't know what to do. You know what? I let fate decide. I will just um, just roll initiative, and depending on how this goes, I will either flee or stay in the fight. Nah, it's even, so I re-roll. Four versus two. All right, so I've got the initiative. So now it is my move first. My move is that I try to establish pursuit. Let's see how this goes. Yeah. 
Yes, 19. All right. So if this isn't a sign, so I now I use I got my action and I could use my action to re-engage my hyperdrive or to attack. And I decide I will attack with advantage. And I try to cripple him. Yes, I hit 13. That's 14 for three points. So he is down to four points of hull. All right. So, um, yeah, four points of hull. Um, I think it is a pretty safe bet that he probably decides to to run now before so let's see if he decides to run asking the game master I think it is very likely that he will run very likely and as always the black die will be the die in front where's the other d10 <laughs> Um, using this one right here. All right, so I say it is very likely that he will run now. <laughs> 79. No, all right, he's cocky. 79 is no. So he does not run. All right, so this is good. Maybe. <laughs> so he tries to break the pursuit and established position himself. <laughs> Natural one. <laughs> but he failed. So it's just a normal attack for him and I stay in pursuit position. So he fires backwards with his turrets and he misses. Seven plus two is nine. Yeah, his targeting systems, they're messed up. He suffered uh, too much damage. And um, I hail him. Pirate vessel. Surrender. Cut your engines. Hold your position. Jettison your cargo. And leave. Oh, but he would have the initiative. All right. So, hmm, what does he do? I mean, I determined he he was not running, but then again, he didn't make any progress last round. He is severely damaged. I'm in better shape. Okay, let's see if this, I think... All right, I give it a 50-50 that he will comply with my instructions. 50-50. But he still got the initiative. 89. No, he will not comply. It's almost an exceptional no. So he is determined to go down rather than facing this shame of yeah, dropping cargo or being defeated um, or, or being uh, driven away. So it's either... Him or me now. I mean, he is determined. So I, I don't need to roll anymore. He He's going all in. So, okay. So this is it. Um, he's got the initiative. But I've still got the better pursuit position. So he tries to establish pursuit. He does. All right. So it's one last ditch effort. He attacks. Ha, 10, but it still hits. Plus 2, 12. Ah, I forgot to roll the damage die with him. Ooh, 5. Ooh, okay, so now it is... Uh, now I'm at 7. <laughs> 7. Now I need to... to uh, yeah. He had the initiative, so now it's my turn. All right, so... No, I'm, I'm not risking it. I, I had my chance, and... Um, 
I'm at seven. So now I use my action. So I just use my move to just um, yeah, get full power to engines. And I use my action to pull back the levers and um, resume my hyperdrive uh, or hyperspace journey because the safety cooldown is uh, shut off and I manage to escape. Barely. But. I did. All right, so let's uh, put this back here, my notebook. Okay. So we're here, so I just um, yeah, marked some locations. So um, I'm on route to the Nambu system. Um, and that was the last encounter so I arrive in system so pirate interdiction which I fought off fought of pirate interdiction let me jot this down real quick fought off Pirate vessel. Uh, let's do bullets and arrive in Nambu system. All right, so arrive in the Nambu system, and now I think it is time to determine what kind of system the Nambu system actually is. So we already established it is in the outer rim. It is probably um, yeah, not really um, strictly controlled. Security is probably low, but we still need to find out uh, what the dominant planetary terrain is and the world tag. All right, so the um, dominant planetary ter terrain is artificially controlled climate or domed, domed cities. All right, so I'm going with domed cities. So um, actually this planet is a very hostile planet. Um, it does not have a breathable atmosphere, not anymore. It is, um, it was polluted or ruined or whatever. Uh, by some sort of industrial accident, I just uh, determined, and the world tag is, yeah, mining and heavy manufacturing. All right, so this actually fits um, fits the description. All right, so um, the Nambu system. It is a mining world. And it does have partially, partially underground and domed mining settlements. settlements and it has no atmosphere all right so it is a polluted hostile barren world with domed mining facilities which are not pretty they're made out of prefabricated modules that are just connected and attached to each other and um, yeah there are better places to live 
to uh, put it short and mildly. All right. So, um, yeah, traffic in system is not that heavy. Um, I do got some uh, ships on my scopes, mostly um, transport vessels. So let's see if I can approach without being harassed. There's a 1 in 10 chance of being harassed, so only on a roll of 1. Oh, I know a 5. All right, so uh, I'm not harassed while um, yeah, approaching the planet and um, yeah, I got um, the coordinates of a mining settlement that I'm supposed to dock at. So I'm asking for clearance and I, I'm granted um, clearance and I land. All right, and the um, the Rodian and the Duros, they told me once I touch down, I uh, should uh, should call a comlink frequency, talk to a guy, and will receive further instructions um, about the unloading process. And I do that, so I touch down and I dial the comlink frequency, <clears throat> and I hear an unfriendly voice. Let's see if it is male or female. It is male, an unfriendly male, probable human or probably human voice. Yeah. Galen Ryder here. I got your package. About time you arrive. What was it? Trouble? Yeah, just uh, ran into some pirate scum, but nothing I couldn't handle. Your package is safe. So, um, how and when do you want to retrieve it? Yeah, well, stay put. I'm coming to your bay, and uh, we'll take it from there. What's your bay number? 317. All right, 317. I'll be there in an hour. Have the cargo ready. Well, I hope you got my payment ready. Yeah, don't worry about your payment. Okay, so um, yeah, I wait an hour. I already got 2,000 up front and this whole job pays 9,000. So I still, um, I'm still owed 7,000 credits. All right, so an hour later, a human guy, pretty, um, pretty burly built, and a little overweight, together with two, yeah, lightly armored and armed men, probably some security detail or henchmen, arrive at my docking bay 317. Um, yeah, I let them in. I meet them at the the ramp. I got my hand rested on my blaster and I'm eyeing them suspiciously and um, let's see what do we have here human human and Deveroni no a quarren all right so this is um this is the the guy that um yeah, talks the probably the leader. This is the security detail. This is me. So we are meeting um, at the um, start of my 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 ramp, and I got my hand on my blaster. All right, before you go in, I want to see the credits. Yeah. So now we'll see what I usually do is when I play off camera and I'm doing these smuggling things, um, I always roll a d20 because there's always a very small chance that this is going to be a rip deal, that they will not pay or don't want to pay, try to take the cargo by force. I only give it a 5% chance, so I'm going to roll a d20 and whenever I roll a 1, that's uh, my rule to to um, yeah 
add a little more tension to these uh, smuggling exchanges and I've, if I roll a one it'll be a rip deal and they of course will not have the money and um, yeah and and try to take the cargo by force but let's see da -da 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 -da. 16 all right so actually that's a pretty good rule the higher the better um so yeah i got your credit chips right here so um he pulls out a handful of credit chips from his pocket shows them to me yeah so um i'm owed seven thousand so he's got like seven little credit chips each has a face value of a thousand credits so um he hands them over that should conclude our business now it is your and uh, now you got to complete your end of the bargain let us in show us the cargo all right so they go in look at the cargo and um, then this guy take pulls out a com link um it's all here get the crate uh, this uh, the repulsor are sled in you got to open the bay doors i got someone coming all right another guy uh, comes in um, with a repulsor sled and i use the cargo lift lower the the cargo loading ramp and they take the crate or the crates uh, with a repulsor sled and that actually concludes this uh, smuggling business this little exchange well pleasure doing business with you i will pass the word along maybe maybe we got work for you in the future if you don't mind giving us your comlink frequency or comlink code certainly not pleasure doing business with you here's my comlink code I'm glad or I would be glad to hear from you again in the future and uh, be careful with that stuff. Yeah, we will. So they leave. Whew. As they're gone, I realize just how much uh, or I just realized under how much pressure and tension I was. Whew. Whew. That was intense, but then I enjoy it. Ha <laughs> ha. Now I finally got some serious money in my pocket. So I got 7,980. But I also got a pretty beat up ship. And I definitely need to require some, some shield generators. All right, so um, let's determine if the facilities here um, do offer some ship upgrades um, but i think it is unlikely from from the planet i described so do they have ship upgrades here it is unlikely and black is in front do they have ship upgrades no 77 and i trigger a random encounter because i rolled doubles all right so um <clears throat> yeah i'm i'm connecting with a planetary data net and browse a few business directories to determine if i actually have the possibility here to purchase uh, a shield generator or to get one installed turns out i don't but i do I will be able to to um, get some basic repairs done but um, a random encounter occurs and I got these um, meaning tables action and descriptor from the full version of uh, mythic game master emulator second edition and let's see I will roll on these tables just for, to get some variety uh, to see what I can come up with as an encounter and always uh, black will be in front Four 
44. That is an illusion. Okay, let's see. Illusion. The 13. Illusion doesn't really speak to me. Chaos. Illusion and chaos. Okay, I got some form of idea. Let's get one more word. Eighty-eight, a lot of doubles. Tactic. All right, illusion, chaos, tactic. Okay, use illusion as a tactic to cause chaos. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, yeah, while I was browsing, um, while I was browsing the directory, uh, suddenly um, emergency sirens go off. Do, 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 do. Atmospheric breach, atmospheric breach, alert, 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 everybody, get indoors, atmospheric breach, damn, all right, so I, um, yeah, I seal my ship, I am still in my ship, but, uh, yeah, I, I close the ramp, I seal my ship, and, um, yeah, turn on life support, as if I would be in space, so, um, yeah, the idea I came up with is um yeah that somebody um yeah triggered uh, a security or an atmospheric breach alert to to cause a distraction to cause chaos to fulfill tactics or a goal i don't know what this is yet it might be that they're robbing something or stealing something or whatever it's not necessarily tied to to me at the moment it is just something that happens so maybe uh, at this point a little um, yeah, explanation how I see random encounters or how I do treat random encounters. Of course, I always try to tie them somehow to my character, but also random encounters for me are a reminder that the world continues and that there are other things happening that are outside of the hero's control and not directly tied to the heroes so that the world actually is a living breathing place with other people having their own agendas and these random encounters they introduce elements into the world that give you the possibility to interact with them and to remind you that it is a living world without necessarily always causing some form of conflict setback or whatever so for example a couple of sessions i think it was last session when this bombing attack happened uh, at the cantina um, i mean it could have maybe there's a local terrorist group trying to fulfill um, their goals maybe it was a planned hit maybe the cantina owner failed to pay protection money to an organized crime gang so it could have many different reasons and it is an an event that occurred that introduced a fact into the world that my character if he decided to could interact with or not i mean i could have conducted further investigations or try to find out more about it or but in this situation I was in, I, I just wanted to get away so that I get not caught up into uh, security affairs. And, and here basically it is similar, it is an, an event that occurs that fits into the world that does not ne necessarily mean that I have an immediate um, yeah, obstacle in front of me. So I sort of do because now I can't leave my ship and, and, and wander around town because it's dangerous. Even maybe I, I don't know that it is a fake alarm yet. I, I'm not willing to try it out. So now I'm sealed off in my ship. But this is just a little sidebar explanation um, of how I treat or interpret 
random encounters in my games. So they are interaction elements, basically, that are introduced into the world. All right, enough with this philosophical stuff now. Back to the game. Uh, all right, so... Um, yeah, actually, I don't really want to stay much longer because, um, yeah, it's a desolate planet. I can't get a shield reactor installed. And even though I could um, get some repairs done under the current circumstances with a possible dome breach and the hostile atmosphere, I'm not really eager to, to do it or to stay here much longer. So I just... Um, ask for clearance and um, yeah let's see if they let me take off because of the supposed uh, atmospheric breach mm, it's 50 50 46 yes they do let me take off um, so I do take off <laughs> And now I want to head back to the um, Delmra system in the mid rim, which is the trade hub uh, that consisted of a huge orbital city that is at, at the crossroads of major hyperspace lanes. This is where I met the female Godel corporate executive. Uh, an old business acquaintance of my parents and I want to get back to her to um, yeah get in contact with her to finally get hopefully introduced to meet members of the Rebel Alliance. All right so um, I will um, I look at the star charts basically and I want to to take a different route because my ship is in pretty bad shape and uh, you know what I think before I head back I do need to take the time to get some repairs done. It is too dangerous traveling through hyperspace or deep space for longer periods of time with my vessel in this bad of shape. I mean I got seven points of hull and I don't have any shields. So um, what I will do is I will check the star charts and um, yeah see what I know to try to um, yeah, maybe figure out a system in the outer rim that is not too far away where I can get my, my repairs done. So let's make an intelligence check. I mean, no, I'm, I was raised in a corporate galactic logistics corporation. Uh, so we probably also delivered stuff in the outer rim. The odds that I know a place here are actually not too bad. So I say it's a DC 10. 11 plus 3 is 14, so yeah. So um, I look at the star charts to get a, um, an idea where I actually are. And then I remind myself um, of some deliveries we've done in the past uh, when the company was still under our or my parents' control. And not too far away, it's a three-hour jump multiplied by hyperdrive multiplier so in my case six hour jump which means one encounter check there is a um yeah a small let's determine this um, by looking um there's a small um small jungle jungle world that Mm. Yeah, a small jungle world that um, focuses on entertainment and recreation. 
uh, big game hunting, jungle expositions, um, casinos, and there they also have some decent repair facilities. All right, so no atmosphere. After completed job launch because of atmosphere loss question mark question mark question mark parentheses re for random encounter and so I set a course for the system FIREL FIREL system 6 hours outer rim um, Jungle Swamp World and Entertainment and Recreation. All right, so this is where I'm headed. Uh, one in ten chance, one encounter or one encounter check. Thank God. I mean, even if it's just 10%, I know my luck and it's always uh, pretty tense. Uh, so after six hours in hyperspace, um, I arrive at the or in the feral system. It's a jungle and swamp world, not much traffic. Um, the facilities there are pretty basic. Um, they're standard. Star, there's a standard starport facility there in an um, yeah in an wide open spread out swamp settlement and this is where I set my ship down and uh, see that I can get some repairs done. All right, I really do want to install a shield generator and. Um, Usually my, my, my rate is that it's 5,000 credits for, um, for one die of shield strength and you can only increase or from your starting value you can only increase every value by three steps. So my, my ship does not have any shield die, shield zero. So the maximum I could get for my ship would be three die of shield strength 3d8 but I would have to pay um, 5,000 um, for the first die and um, yeah I do have enough money but then I do not have enough left for repairs so I try to to um, yeah, to negotiate to, to bring the price down using my charisma so we um, start some negotiations and um, but it's pretty difficult because um, yeah I don't really have a strong negotiation position and um, obviously the guy sees my ship um, or, or she um, doesn't really matter uh, sees my ship sees that I'm in bad shape and that I do really need a shield generator, but still maybe he's got a heart or she's got a heart for a spacer down on his luck. So I say it's a DC of 15. So I need to get a 16 to be successful and I have a charisma bonus of plus two. <laughs> no, of course not. So, um, 
no, there's uh, nothing I can do about it. If I want a shield generator, I gotta pay 5,000 credits. But I do want one, so I'm paying 5,000, so I got 2,980 credits left. And now I got my shields of 1d8. And the, how this works is that at the start of every combat, I will roll 1d8. And this will be my shield strength for the um, for the upcoming combat. And once the shields are depleted, they are depleted, but they recharge between encounters. So if I am in the or start the next space combat encounter, I will roll one d8 again, and this will be my shield strength for this encounter, and so on. So if I at any point should have two d8. I would roll 2d8 and this is how this will work. My hull is uh, set at uh, 32 uh, maximum hit die. This is because I'm playing playing solo. But now I still have the problem of um, hull damage. Uh, so running a ship is actually pretty expensive. Um, I ruled that one point of hull to restore one point of hull is 500 credits. Um, and I got, what did I say I got left? I got 2,980. All right, so I will restore five points of hull. So my hull is back up to 12 for 2,500 credits. So I am at 480 credits. So credits are running, or I'm burning credits fast. But at least now I got some protection in the form of shields. I got some repairs done. And now I just really need to get better actually at flying and shooting. So this will be my next priority. All right, so let's just say this whole endeavor um, took me a day getting the shield generator installed, while they're installing the shield generator, um, I'm repairing my hull. So uh, after a day, I'm ready to head back to the goat hill. So let's determine now, because of uh, the shifting uh, hyperspace routes and planetary movement and stuff, the route I need to take now to get back. On my point crawl map, I will start at 10 and I have to go to 5. 5. Oh no, come on, are you kidding me? So I need to get from here to here. All right, I will avoid this route. So I will go this way, this way, this way, this way, this way. So NH means navigational hazard. So this is an area which might feature um, iron storms or um, gravitational anomalies or debris fields or asteroids. So here I might be, uh, have to complete some sort of piloting challenge, but I rather do piloting challenges than combat against pirates. So that's five hours, 10 hours, 17 hours, 20 hours and 12, 32 hours travel time multiplied by the hyperdrive multiplier. So that is 64 hours of travel time, which translates to seven encounter checks. All right, so let's jot this down real quick. So, um, Lift off after shield install and repairs. And I need to get from 10 
to 5. And this is 64 hours. And NH, navigational hazards on uh, yeah, one part of the route. And it is seven checks for encounters. All right, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so let's start. So this, the first 10 hours will be this stretch of the way here. So this is 10 hours times two because I got times two hyperdrive multiplier. So that's 20 hours. So that's two encounter checks on this leg of the journey. And only a one on a D10 is an encounter. I'm rolling both of them at the same time. And every one is an encounter. Oh, lucky me. All right. So I cross off two encounter checks. I've completed the first, uh, let's put this down here so you can see it better on camera. Mm. I've completed the first leg of the journey up to here. Now this is seven times two, that's 14 hours, which means two more encounter checks. And here, uh, I say just like here, I got a 40% chance on this part of the journey to encounter a navigational hazard. So on a one to four, I will encounter a navigational hazard. Two, of course. All right, so third encounter check. I mark this as an E for encounter within the circle. And it is predetermined because I determined that this is an area of natural or navigational hazards. So um, I just go with an iron storm. So it's basically it's just fluff. I need to complete a, a piloting challenge. So um, I am dropped back into real space because of a navigational hazard, a huge iron storm. Um, with um, yeah, powerful energy discharges is plaguing this region of space. So um, I put all power into my newly acquired shields. Let's see how good they are. Four. All right. So. Uh, just to save some paper, um, I'm using I'm using my digital pad. So shield is at four. Hull is at the moment at twelve. And how this works is just my normal skill challenge mechanics. I need to complete, or I need to get. Oh, it's not really, I need to get four successes, four piloting successes to pass through this area. And whenever I fail, I take 1d3 points of damage. And shields are reduced first and then hull. All right, 1d3 points of damage and the DC is, it's not too bad. Let's say it's a DC of 13. So, um, yeah, well, what, what do I mean? Not too bad. I mean, it's still worse than 50 50. All right, so my piloting bonus is, um, yeah, plus one, and I need to get a 14 for the first success. Ah, oh, damn! All right, so I fail, so I take 1d3 points of damage. Come on, two points. All right, so my shields are holding one, two, and my shields are down to two, two points of shield damage. Come on, come on. 
Yes, 19. That is a success. Again. Ten, eleven, that's not enough. One D three points of damage. <laughs> three points of damage. So my shield is down to zero. And one is left over. My hull is at eleven. Alright, next check. Come on, please. Seventeen, yes, 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 yes. Halfway through. So I'm in the middle of the iron storm now, directly in the center. <sighs> yes, fourteen plus one, fifteen. Come on, last check, last check, almost through. Come on, please. Eleven, twelve. Damn, one short. Ah, come on. Damage, one d three points. Please, not too much. Yes, one. <laughs> Lucky me. Ten points of hell. Come, last, last, last check. <laughs> Damn, five. Come on. Please give me this last check. Ah, two points of damage. Oh, hull down to eight. Come on. Ah. Please. <laughs> Natural one. It doesn't really matter, but oh, come on, how can you be so unlucky? <laughs> Three points. Uh, I got five. How left them? Oh, come on now, please. Please. Come on, come on, come on. Yes, 12 is 13. Ah, oh, come. Yeah, I'm I'm cheating a little bit now, all right? Usually I would need 14, but 12 plus 1, it's 13, so I'm at the DC because I'm already almost through the thing. Uh, come, yeah, I, yeah, I, I can live with it. <laughs> I can live with it. All right, so I barely make it through. Um, my ship took quite a beating. I'm down to 5 hull. I got... Uh, Thank God I got these shields installed. Without the shields, um, it would have been much, much worse. So I need to update my hull here. So from 12 down to 5. And with a press of a button, zack, my pad is clear. And so I passed this leg. Now I need to make the encounter check for this one, but it's only a normal uh, one and ten, so only on a one. No, no encounter. So that was check number four. So now we're at the last leg of the journey, which is this leg right here. So that is uh, 30 hours. 30 hours, 15 times 2, which is exactly the last three um, checks. But since there is nothing special, it's just every one is an encounter. I can. Yes, no encounter. Hoo hoo, 2 4 4. Whew. All right, so I finally make it. Alright, so all right, I update my, my log uh, off camera. So um yeah, I managed to arrive at the Delmrar system, ask for clearance, get clearance, dock at the orbital station, 
make contact with the female Gotel. Her name is Telbra. Let's give her a name. Telbra. Alright, so female Gotel is Telbra. All right, so I make contact with her and we meet in this private room that we met before. And um, yeah, she says, well, Galen, I've got good news for you. I made contact with a few friends of mine, with a few associates. Uh, I didn't get, uh, or I didn't go into too much detail. I just told them that um, I have an old acquaintance that suffered personally through the empire and that for personal reasons um, he's looking uh, for, for ways to, to get back at them to complete his own personal goal, that he's trustworthy, that he needs um, the resources, and that he can be a great um, asset to the, to the cause. And they agreed to meet with you. And she slips me a data card. Take this data card, leave the station. Once you're in deep space, insert the data card, look at the data, and follow the instructions. It'll lead you to a contact of the Rebel Alliance. Yeah, I quickly take the card. Well, I don't know what to say. I'm in your debt. No, you're not. I wish I had the courage to do something, but um, I have to keep a low profile. But I can understand your anger and your drive and your urge to do something. So um, if I can help you in your cause, that is thanks enough for me. Well, thank you, Telbra. I keep that in mind. And um, this is my comlink code. If I'm in range and you need something, you can reach me there. Yeah, all right. So I take the data card, head back to my ship, ask for clearance, launch, head into deep space. So that means I'm making a short little micro jump. And so just engage the hyperspace real short disengage, drop into real space at some random point between systems in deep space. And there I will look at the data card. And here we will end this session and we continue our adventure next session when Galen Ryder hopefully makes contact with the Rebel Alliance. All right, so um, yeah, as always, I hope you enjoyed this episode and I will see you soon. And as always, stay safe and stay healthy. And if you like what I'm doing here, please consider subscribing to the channel because I would like to see this channel grow. Actually, I'm enjoying doing this. And um, maybe you've seen it already between the Star Wars sessions, just to get some more variety into the channel. Um, I will throw in a different game every once in a while. So I did a miniature delve um, in the last video. And um, maybe I do uh, a solo board game playthrough in the next video. I'm not sure yet, but I will also shortly continue our Star Wars my, which is now our Star Wars campaign, 
with Galen Ryder powered by Nave. So have a nice evening and also have a nice weekend and I will see you soon. Bye bye.